Back in 2019, I told you guys the story of Corey Worthington, an Australian teenager who became internationally famous and a legend for throwing a massive house party while his parents were out of town. Yeah, it really seemed like something out of a movie. And with that said, many have speculated over the years that Corey Worthington's party was the inspiration behind the king of all party movies, Project X. Now, many of you might recall that in the wake of Project X's release in 2012, there was somewhat of a partying epidemic occurring in the real world, with high school and college age kids around the world trying to recreate the party shown in Project X. Hell, I was in college at the time and it seemed like every day there was a new Project X party being advertised on Facebook and you show up to the thing and it's like four dudes in a garage drinking Coors Light. Yeah, I never really got that Project X experience, I reckon, but my personal anecdote aside, there were an actual handful of large Project X style parties that were thrown in real life. Today I'm going to be telling you all the story of the Mac Daddy of all Project X parties. Close to 5,000 people in attendance, an abundance of on-site footage recorded, destruction, mayhem, all initiated from online banter. This is the story of Project X Heron. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark is a VPN app that works across all of your devices, protecting your IP and data. With Surfshark, your online browsing activity is protected from advertisers, ISPs, and hackers. And not only does Surfshark keep you anonymous online, it allows you to change your server location to pretty much anywhere in the world, which is actually pretty useful. Want to watch a show or movie exclusive to Canadian Netflix, but you're located in the United States like me? Simply change to a Canadian server and watch to your heart's content. You can use this same server swapping strategy to access region locked content or country blocked websites. You guys can get Surfshark 83% off with three additional months free by clicking my link in the description and using code WAVY at checkout. Big shout out to them for sponsoring. Now let's get into the Project X Heron story. Our story begins in September of 2012, approximately six months after the release of Project X in theaters. The location is Heron, a quiet town with a population of approximately 20,000 located in the Netherlands. The genesis of the party begins with Myrta, a 15-year-old girl living in Heron, and at the time, she was about to turn 16 and wanted to throw a sweet 16 birthday party. That said, she didn't have anything crazy in mind. She just wanted people from her high school to show up and celebrate with her. So she takes to Facebook and creates a public event invitation for her 16th birthday party, which would be held at her house. A few hours pass and all is well with around 80 or so people accepting invitations to the party. But eventually this number begins to get uncomfortably high. The RSVP count would blow past 100 and reach 500 attendees. And where I come from, 500 people is like your entire high school. Something wasn't right here. Myrta was getting too many people signing up for this thing. It would soon become clear that Myrta's party invitation was finding itself in the timeline feeds of people with very loose if almost no connection to her, and it was being shared in a viral fashion. With the Project X film fresh in everyone's mind, Myrta's party invitation seemed like a free-for-all opportunity to throw a Project X in real life. While accurate hour-by-hour -hour invitation counts aren't available, it's been reported that within 48 hours, Myrta had 16,000 people get invited to this event. And there was much online chatter surrounding a potential Project X-style event that was going to be happening in Heron. Naturally, Myrta started having some serious concerns here, and she communicated with her parents about the alarming amount of uh, RSVPs she was getting for this birthday party. So they urged her to take down the post, and this was a recommendation that she would follow. She took down her birthday invitation post. However, by this point, it was too late. Hashtag Project X Heron would essentially replace her events post, and a sizable group online seemed convinced that a festival-sized party was imminent for the town of Heron. And while Myrta had actively taken steps to deter the potentially thousands of people from showing up to the town, a handful of lone wolf would-be party organizers would take charge and make sure the dream of Project X Heron became a reality. There are a couple of key figures responsible for keeping the hope alive and spreading the word of the party after Myrta's cancellation. It's reported that a man named Jesse Hobson created his own Facebook page promoting Project X Heron. And what's funny about this Jesse guy is that he didn't even live anywhere near the party, he lived in New Zealand. Another guy, who was a bit of an edgelord, helped organize the party on Facebook as well. This man would remain anonymous, going by the pseudonym Ibe de Fure. 
Together, both Ibes and Jesse's page served as planning hubs for what was looking like to be a disastrous party event in the near future. More than 30,000 additional invites had been sent around the world, with plenty of people expressing interest in showing up to this soon-to-be 16-year-old's house. Festival maps were created to show different areas of where people would be at the party, with a main stage for potential musicians to play being right outside the 16-year-old's house. A trailer for the event was posted on YouTube on September 19th of 2012, racking up more than 30,000 views in the following days. And to this day, the comment section remains relatively untouched and you can really get the vibe of what these partiers were putting out. Some people said that they were ready to destroy Heron. Banners would be posted on apartment buildings in nearby towns advertising the event, and local news media even picked up on the upcoming Project X hype, and they reported on the event which in a way advertised the party even more, making the situation worse. Yeah, this was a perfect storm for a disastrous party, and it's reported that Myrta and her family actually left their house, leaving the area that the party was going to be planned so they weren't involved and wrapped up in this shit. So, at least for Myrta, her birthday was kind of ruined by this. The party was planned for the night of September 21st and the clock was ticking. Law enforcement that had caught wind of the incoming party scrambled to dissuade people from coming. Posts would appear on social media warning people not to come to Heron. Authorities also tried to ban the sale of alcohol in the area and they closed off a number of incoming roads. Police figured that if they tore down banners and signifiers pointing to the party, that party goers when they arrived to Heron wouldn't know where to go and a party wouldn't happen. Well, they were wrong there because Google Maps is a thing, and by this point the details of the party had been plastered all over social media. This thing was gonna happen. On the evening of September 21st, the party began. An estimated 4,000 people arrived to the town by train and they beelined to the party and a mob quickly formed. Videos from the time show car after car coming into the area and huge crowds forming in the streets and groups of people chanting and getting hyped up, some half-heartedly celebrating the not-present Myrta's birthday. Obnoxious, sure, but nothing all too crazy had happened. Yet. At the beginning of the party, most people were just hanging out, passing around bottles of alcohol, and pulling pranks on other partygoers. But unfortunately, as the night grew older and the liquor and beer flowed stronger, things would begin to get a little bit more degenerate. Considering the massive amount of partiers and, you know, some of these same partiers days before being open on social media that they wanted to cause mayhem at Project X Heron, it's no surprise that a decent amount of the party goers there actually had destructive intentions they were willing to act on. Things quickly got out of hand, with party goers getting violent and burning down local structures and cars. Looting also ensued, with party goers breaking local shop windows and piling in to steal whatever they wanted. The property destruction got the attention of police officers who were already at the event, as well as the greater town's police force. Hundreds of additional policemen in riot gear were called into the area to stop the madness, however this didn't really work as the sheer mass of people there was too much for the cops to handle. They were quickly pelted with beer cans, rocks, and anything else the party goers could get their hands on, till the point where they eventually were just forced to back away. There was nothing that the town's police force could do. Project X Heron had fulfilled its goal. It was truly a real-life Project X party. The youth had their way, Heron was ransacked, and the destructive gathering beat out all expectations. Not only the expectations of the party patrons, but law enforcement as well. The aftermath. The damaged cause, when later calculated, added up to millions. One man living in the town at the time stated that the attendees were, quote, very violent and well prepared and deliberately sought confrontation. Reports and videos from the time certainly reflected this. I mean, you saw the clips, people were destroying the town left and right. This thing was totally out of control. The following morning, the mayor of Heron spoke out about the event, calling those who attended scum. News articles in the next few days portrayed the event as an unfortunate incident perpetrated by irresponsible delinquents, and this thing made European news headlines. 
The mayhem that had occurred was truly jaw-dropping, and in response to the mess caused by partygoers, a cleanup Project X Heron community page popped up on social media which helped locals organize a cleanup effort for the giant mess. Another Facebook page would pop up which aimed to help identify delinquents who had caused damage to the town during the party. And despite the hundreds of people that participated in the rioting involved with this party, only 12 people were tried and sentenced for rioting related crimes stemming from Project X Heron. A portion of a town utterly ransacked and it all started from an innocent post from a 15 year old girl advertising her 16th birthday party. And I'll be 100% real with you guys, Myrta and her family by no means are responsible for this. Her post got completely hijacked, and you know, even if she left it on public, who would have expected something like this? The people who actively went out of their way to keep the Project X dream alive are the ones who really made this a problem. At the end of the day though, Project X Heron did make party history and you would be hard pressed to cite another party that topped this one in terms of scale, attendees, and well, the amount of destruction. It truly was a party for the history books. And that, my friends, wraps up the story of Project X Heron. Make sure you let me know what you thought about the story down below in the comment section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace. Damn, son. You ain't subscribed to Wavy? Go ahead. Slab like and ring that bell.